Pantheon is the new Intamin LSM multi-launch roller coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg in Virginia. It was supposed to open in 2020, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, amongst other things, it was delayed until 2021 and to eventually 2022. As this video is released, I have gotten 18 rides on Pantheon in the front, back, middle, and many other rows, including night rides. Busch Gardens has definitely got a winner on their hands. So let's jump right into this review of Pantheon. Let's start with the stats. Pantheon has a max height of 178 feet, a top speed of 73 miles per hour, making it the world's fastest multi-launch roller coaster, a track length of 3,328 feet, but because of the swing launch, the coaster actually travels a length of 4,226 feet. The ride time is around a minute and a half, and it includes two amazing hang time filled inversions, which are a zero G winder and a zero G stall. Finally, it has four incredible launches, including a backward launch. Now that we've gotten the stats out of the way, let's jump right into the ride experience. Before you actually get on Pantheon, you have to cross a bridge that goes over the train tracks, which leads you into the Pantheon Plaza. The bridge is marked with a huge piece of theming. It's a hand holding a sword that has the coaster's name engraved into the sword. It's really cool. As you walk over the bridge, you are greeted with this amazing coaster right in front of you. To the left, you have the ride lockers and a test seat. As you walk straight, you finally enter the ride's queue, which has this incredible entrance sign, one of the best in the park. This queue isn't really long at all, so when the crowded summer days roll around, there is an extended queue, which I have seen filled up, and that's about a two hour wait, give or take. Anyway, back to the queue. As you walk through it, you will find these stones that tell about the different Roman gods that the ride is themed to. We have Minerva, Mercury, Neptune, Jupiter, and Pluto. Different sections of the ride are themed to the different gods, which is a little bit of a stretch in my opinion, but you do you, Bush Gardens. The queue doesn't really have much theming besides these stones, but there is nice landscaping. As these plants begin to bloom, it will look really nice. You also have a these great angles of Pantheon from the queue line. Finally, you walk up into the station, which has these different banners around it, which is a nice touch. But besides that, the station is pretty bare. I personally think it's a huge missed opportunity that Busch Gardens Williamsburg didn't theme this attraction really well, but the ride more than makes up for it. Pantheon has two trains, which have these amazing zero car designs on them. One of my favorite on any coaster train. Um, the trains have five cars per train, and two rows per car are seated with two per row. This allows for 10 rows and a total of 20 riders per train. So the capacity isn't the best. It especially is bad because the operations on this coaster are very slow. But as the ride ops get used to it, they'll get better. Keep in mind, this coaster doesn't officially open until March 25th. So all these rides that I'm getting are, for, are from pass holder preview times. Let's jump into the ride experience. First, you enter the ride vehicles. These are the intimate trains similar to Velocicoaster at Universal Orlando, so they're extremely comfortable. One of the most comfortable coaster trains in my opinion. What's great about these trains is that the lap bars do not come down on you during the ride, which is great because you can really feel the airtime. Speaking of airtime, if you do get stapled on this coaster, it doesn't matter. The airtime is so strong, especially on the swing launch, you can feel it no matter what. When you dispatch, you go through these S-bends. It's nothing special, but it gives a taste of what the ride is about to do. Then you encounter your first launch. This one has quite a kick to it, even though it's only 36 miles per hour. You can really feel the acceleration. This launches you into your first inversion, a zero-g winder. It gives very good hang time in all seats. After that, you have this turn to the right, which kind of swoops down using the terrain. Pantheon is a terrain coaster, and you'll see that later on in the ride. After this swooping turn, you have these two off-axis hills. The first one gives some nice, really weird lateral airtime. It's not ejector or anything, but you do get a nice little pop. 
The second one just gives laterals. This leaves you up to the swing launch. The second launch, or the first one of the swing launch, is 50 miles an hour. This launches you over this bunny hill that you'll go over three times. The first bunny hill for the launch doesn't give you much airtime or not any airtime at all, but it does give you halfway up the top hat. And in the front row, you get a nice little weightlessness pop, which is really cool before you roll back. What's cool about this launch is that there's like two parts. It's not a continuous acceleration. So when you launch, you go over this airtime hill and then you launch again. When you ride it, you'll feel it. It's really, really cool. After that, you roll back to your backwards launch. This one is 61 miles an hour. This throws you over the backwards airtime hill, and this is one of the most violent airtime moments I've ever experienced. There are like two pops of airtime. You get the airtime hill pop, and you have a little step up into the spike, which gives a little pop too. I'm saying pop too many times, I know that. The pull up into the 90 degree vertical spike is pretty intense. To me, it's the most intense positive G moment on the coaster. The reverse spike is best experienced in the back row because you're higher up. While rising up the spike, you get a good solid five seconds of weightlessness before you fall back and go um, traverse your fourth launch, which is 68 miles an hour, which absolutely launches you to space over the airtime hill and to the top hat. Even though this launch is only 68 miles per hour, it feels like you're going 100 miles an hour. The last swing launch on this, when you fly over the airtime hill, this is the most violent moment of ejector airtime I've ever experienced, and in my opinion, it's the best part of the coaster. Either that, or the backwards launch. Once you crest the top hat, this marks the second half of Pantheon. You get a really nice view of the park from the top, but you can't take it in for long, because you plummet down your 95 degree drop, which is beyond vertical which is absolutely outstanding. This drop is one of the best in America, especially in the back row. In the back row, you get a good solid three seconds of extreme ejector airtime before you get slammed into your seat around the turn that leads you up to the massive outward bank turn. This is where Pantheon uses this terrain once again. If you look at Pantheon from off-ride, you can see there is a little gully, which is where the turn is situated. I really don't know the exact length of the drop, but I'm guessing it's around 190 feet. This turn is where you will get your on-ride photo taken. At night, this camera flash blinds you, so beware of that. After this turn, which is not extremely intense, but you can definitely feel it, you get thrown laterally to the side on this massive outward bank turn. Think Steel Vengeance. Sit on the right side of the train to experience the full potential of this element. This turn gives floater, but when Pantheon warms up, you get solid ejector. It's a good 5 seconds of it, too. After this turn, you have a slight ejector pop before you rotate 180 degrees into the zero-g stall. This little airtime moment surprised me, because I didn't expect it at all. It's a cool little bonus. The zero-g stall then gives 3 seconds of hang time. Not only that, there are two insane head chopper moments with the supports. After you twist out of the stall, which gives nice laterals, you have perhaps the best near miss on the ride, which is when you turn under the drop off the top hat. I suppose this is why the park has a 76 inch or 6 foot 4 height limit. Speaking of the height requirement, Pantheon has a 52 inch height requirement, which is the same as Apollo's Chariot, but not as tall as Alpengeist or Griffin. Back to the ride, you turn to the left, then you get these S bends similar to that of Intimidator 305. They aren't, they aren't as snappy as I-305, but they do give nice laterals. After that, you twist 90 degrees into your zero-g wall stall. This is best experience on the left side of the train. After this floaty wall stall, you fly smoothly into the brakes, concluding your minute and a half experience and ride with the gods on Pantheon. This is where you just say to yourself, what just happened? I mean, just look at these reactions. This coaster absolutely delivered, even on its first train, even when the ride hasn't even fully warmed up. When you fly into the brakes like this, it tells you that this ride has absolutely no pacing problems. The only time this ride slows down is during the rollback and the reverse spike. This ride is absolutely insane. Keep in mind, this thing hauls even in the cold spring weather. I can't wait to see how it's going to run in the middle of summer. This is definitely one of the best roller coasters in Virginia, if not the best. Pantheon has strong airtime, 
good positive g-forces and laterals. The only disadvantage of Pantheon is its theming. The coaster is non-stop action until the brake run. The best seat is definitely the back row, as it's much more forceful. However, the second best seat on Pantheon is definitely the front row. And Pantheon is absolutely a stellar night ride. In my opinion, it's much better at night than during the day, as there is no light when you traverse through Pantheon's incredible layout. So what do I rank Pantheon? I will give it a 9. The only reason why it's not getting a perfect 10 is because it lacks in the theming department, but for the ride experience itself, it gets a perfect 10. This ride is absolutely incredible and it was so worth the 3 year wait. Of course, would I have liked it to open sooner? Yeah. But, you know, it kept me on my toes, what can I say? So what do you think of Pantheon? Comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.